All right, I'm going to be walking you through how to do project one on a Windows laptop. So here I am on the website, and I'm going to click on P1 right here, and I'm going to scroll down. It talks about installing Python on your computer. I'm going to assume you already watched those videos and did that. So I'm going to scroll down a little bit more. Um, this, this project is kind of unusual. It's the only one where I'm actually going to show you how to do the whole thing in the video. Usually you'll kind of have to figure out how to do it yourself. But I think it helps to get everybody started off on the right foot. The first thing that the document talks about is organizing all your files this semester. And there's different ways you can do that. But I'm going to show you how I like to do it. So I'm going to go to File Explorer. And I'm going to go to my documents. And I'm going to create a new folder called CS301. And in there, I'm going to create few subfolders or subdirectories. Let me create another one here. And I'm going to give them names like P1 for Project 1, P2 for Project 2, and so on and so forth. Right? There are 10 projects this semester. Okay, so I've done that. Now, this is telling me to download a couple files to that directory. I need to get uh, test.py in particular. So if I scroll back up here, I see here is test.py. You know, something that will not work is if I right click on here and say save link as. Um, that's not going to work for me. I have to actually left click on this and open it up. And this is actually some Python code in this test.py file. And I want to download this. So what I have to do is I have to right click on the raw button on GitHub and I say save link as. And I'm going to go to Documents and CS301. I'm going to save this in P1, just like so. Okay, so let me head back here. Okay, so I've done some of this downloading. I've created some directories to keep my files. Now we're going to do this next step. We're going to create a Python notebook. So if I come back here, right, and I look under P1, right, I see that that's where I saved my, I saved my um, file. What I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on this and let me see here. Mm. I'm going to say properties and I can see here's a location. Right, so I'm going to copy this whole thing. Right, so I'm going to copy that. And uh, what I'm going to do now, right, now I copied the path. You can also see I could have grabbed it here. I copied the path of the P1 directory, and I'm going to go down to the Start menu, I'm going to search for PowerShell. All right, so this is the shell you're going to be using this semester, if you're a Windows user. You see there's a few here. I want to just get the plain PowerShell at the top. It doesn't say ISC or x86. I'm just going to use this one right here. And I'm going to say CD, stands for Change Directory. Um, one of the reasons I'll often want to call folders directories is that the acronyms um, make more sense. And I want to, I typed a quote here, I want to put, paste this. So I'm going to paste that. On Windows you can actually just paste into a PowerShell by right clicking. Remember that I copied that before. I'm going to have another quote just like that. Uh, in this case I wouldn't actually need quotes because I don't have any spaces in this name and I'll encourage you to I'll come up with file names that don't have spaces in them. But for now, I'll just do that just in case. Notice I have a space here between CD and the first quote. I'm going to do that. And now that I'm here, I'm going to say LS. And you can actually see that I'm looking at the same files in PowerShell as I have in File Explorer. And so what I can actually do, if I want to go inside of this P1, you know, well, of course, if I'm over here, I just double-click P1, right? Double click P1, and over here I can say change directory P1. Right? I can't double click when I'm over here. I'm actually I have to type everything. So I do that. And if I type ls, you see that I actually have the same file here. And you might notice a difference, right? Here it says test.py. Uh, file Explorer likes to hide details like that from me. But when you're the PowerShell, you'll actually see the true name of the file. Okay, so I'm all set up. I've downloaded my files. I'm going to do this next step now. I'm going to create 
Python notebook. And when I'm creating that, I want to do it in the same place where I have my test at Pi. That's why I moved here. So I'm just trying to type Jupyter notebook. All right. This is going to actually work for me here. Uh, some of you, if that doesn't work, you might end up having to say something like this. Python dash M notebook. But for me, it's going to work to just say Jupyter Notebook. So I'm going to do that. Okay, and you can see I have my test.py here. These are actually, right, since I started inside of P1, I'm going to see all the same files in, on this website as I actually see uh, in File Explorer. Right? And this is kind of a weird... Um, weird setup. It feels like it might feel like I'm on some sort of website, uh, but you see here it says local host, and it says that because this website is more or less you could think of it as running on my computer, right? It's actually still running inside of this window, and it's very important that I don't close this window until I'm done and saved all my work. Because if I close this window, then this web page dies. As long as this is open, I can keep using this, and I could even uh, say take this on an airplane where I don't have Wi-Fi access and it'll keep working just fine. It's not a real website, it's just local host. Okay, so I wanted to go to new Python 3 and uh, and I'm going to give this a name. I'm going to call it let's call it main. Okay, and if I go back to this project and I scroll down down, down, down. I see there's some code I can run. I copy this. And I paste this here. And now there's different things I could do. I could hit run. Uh, but instead I'm going to hit shift enter. Right? You should get very comfortable using the keystrokes on your laptop. And we'll eventually learn more about what this code does, but you can see that it's somehow somehow taking making name equal to word. And then it's going hello world together, and I see that that gets printed out. Um, you're also going to see here that it says Q1, right? All these things are based on questions. Q stands for question. Uh, basically, the answer to question one is, hello world, and we're going to be testing you um, for that. This is actually a nice place to check our progress. I'm going to say file, uh, save, and checkpoint. And over here, we talk about how there are these, if I go a little bit down, there are these tests I can run. I can say Python test.py, and I have to do that from PowerShell, and I'm going to do it in a new PowerShell window. Right? I'm not going to do it in this one. Right? Remember, I have to leave that one alone. Um, so I'm going to open up a new one, just like so. PowerShell, and uh, I'm going to actually do a CD to the same thing. You might wonder how I'm typing that so fast. I'm hitting the arrow keys on my keyboard to see all the commands I've run previously. Another one that will save you a lot of time. So I'm going to say ls now, and I'm going to cd to p1 ls. Okay, I see that here's my notebook file, main.ipy and b, right? That, that contains all this code over here. Here's my test.py file. I want to run my test.py file to see whether, what kind of grade I would get on this one. So I'm going to say python test.py, just like that. And this will take a moment to run. And I see right now, if I turn this on, I would probably get 50% from my grade. Right, we'll learn more how to read this, uh, but we can see that test one passed. Test two, well, I don't have any result yet. Right, that's because I've done question one up here, but I haven't done, I haven't done question two down here. And, and so this project is nice, it's just kind of a warm up. So I actually tell you exactly what to do for question two. We're going to copy that again and paste that here and run that with shift enter. And now this is very good. And if I come back here, let me see if that fixes it. So I'm going to run this again and, uh, and let's see what I got. Okay, this is actually something that surprises people all the time. Uh, it's still saying it's not finding uh, test two. And the reason is that after you make a change, you have to save this again. Every time, so I'm going to do a save and checkpoint again. And now if I actually come back here, I'm going to hit up arrow, enter. 
Okay, fingers crossed. Okay, great. Got 100% just as I was expecting. So I'm almost done, uh, but there's one more detail. I need to put my name on this project. All right, so I'm going to copy this, and we should put this at the top of the notebook. So I'm going to copy this just like so, and uh, I want this to be the first cell. So I'm going to say insert cell above. I'm going to paste this here. I could run this if I want. I could run everything again. It doesn't change anything. I'm going to save it. And, and actually, I'm just going to hit Control S. You see, every time I hit Control S, it's checkpointing it. I don't have to go through the menu each time. Okay, so <clears throat> one last step before I hand it in. I'm going to make sure I'm still passing the tests. Never hand something in unless like the last thing you did was see all the tests pass. And uh, now, I'm, now I'm pretty good. I can go to the website and actually hand this in. All right, so I'm going to hit back here. I'm on the website. I'm going to go to Projects. Uh, this is already signing me in, but normally you'll have to click this. And make sure you're using your at WISC. That's remembering my password, so it's a little bit simpler. Uh, I'm working on P1 right now. And I'm going to find this file I just worked on. I'm going to go under Documents, CS301, P1, main.ipynb. And, uh, and uh, let, let's try submitting that for now. <coughs> so I see I have this errors. There's a couple things. I'm signed in as T Harder, and it, it's saying, oh, well, your net ID is not net ID 1. And also, there's nobody called net ID 2. So let me actually head back here, and I see I pasted that, but I forgot this, right? I'm the submitter, and my email is like this, which means my net ID is just that, right? And I, my partner, well, I don't have a partner, so I'm just going to say none. Right? Whoever is doing the upload, and only one of you should do the upload, that that's person's a submitter. The other person who does not upload a file, they'll be the partner. Okay, so I changed this. I know it doesn't matter, but in this case, but just to be paranoid, I'm going to run this again, as should you, whenever you even make the smallest change. And that's still passing, so let me, let me give this another try. Right, let me choose my file. And this time it's actually going to work. Well, let me talk, tell you about one more detail. You see this box here. Is there any specific feedback you're interested in? Um, if you tell us something that you want us to give you feedback on, we'll spend more time on that. And so I'm just going to say here, I want feedback on everything. All right, and I'm going to submit this. All right, you, you see some of these say info down here. That doesn't matter because there's no errors. That works just fine. If I scroll back up, I can go to View Submissions. <coughs> and you actually see I've done this a few times. I was testing this. There's a bunch of different submissions. I can look at my previous versions. Uh, when we're grading you, we're just going to look at your most recent submission. You can see we haven't tested this yet. Uh, the person grading you is going to be able to see what you asked for. And then later they're going to be leaving feedback down here on the code. So you're going to have to scroll down and see what comments they left. Well, one last thing is that if you look at this, it kind of looks like a date. Uh, this is 2019, September 5th, um, 00, zero is, uh, is it's kind of like the first hour of the day, 36 minutes, 48 seconds. This is kind of a universal time zone, right? So it'll be about six or seven all hours off of what um, time actually is in the Midwest. Okay, so that's it. Um, feel free to ask me or the TAs uh, questions if you're in any, tr in any trouble, and good luck.